I ended up having a bit of a cold this week, so I wasn't as productive as I normally am. So this week I worked more on the mask. I found that um, one day I was working on brightening up and fixing shapes, shapes and trying to get it to be more solid, the mask, and I made it like way too cold. So then I spent another session then working in the lights, you know, making that more um, bright and colorful, and I think that's helping a lot. It's weird. So when I was at my atelier in Chicago and we worked all from um, natural light from skylights, the cloudy days were the best because cloudy days everything would be very warm and bright and colorful. And then the sunny days would be darker and everything would be very cold, counterintuitive. Um, and then it seems like it's the opposite here and I don't know if that's um, I, I know that my windows aren't um, true facing north, but they are north, north-ish. Um, and I'm also not working from a skylight, but on this painting, the mask painting, I am working from a side window, so that might be affecting it too. But the sunny days seem to be really great, seem to be really make everything look um, really colorful and bright and warm. And then the cloudy days, it's the opposite where things are darker and a lot colder so it's the opposite which is good because I'm in San Jose so um, almost every day here is sunny and then those are the days that I prefer to um, work from natural light then and then uh, yesterday I started experimenting with texture again I bought some stand oil which has the consistency like honey and the I wanted to use that for the the part of the mask that has the sculptural design part to it. What I ended up doing to not kind of overcomplicate it, I just mixed up one color, like a base color for the mask, and I would mix that, the stand oil, into the paint and lay areas on thickly or like put down lines, like a beaded line, just to see if I could get texture and then um, planning then when it dries, then on top of that texture I can be more accurate with the the color and value then. But so it was looking it was looking cool. I was getting a texture to it and like getting lines and a sculptural effect with it. Um, what I would do is I'd put that like thicker paint down on it and then I'd take a thin brush and um, use that without paint on it to kind of sculpt with. So if I was like making a line and I'd put the, the line down with the thicker stand oil paint and the line would be too thick, I would then take another clean brush and um, drag that over the outsides of the line to make it look thinner. Um, so that was, yeah, I was getting cool effects with that. And But I, don't, I, di I didn't know how it was going to dry so I just did um, a section right here uh, on the forehead just to test it out and so then um, when I cleaned up painting and then right before I went to bed that day I looked at it and it looked like the paint had um, kind of uh, lost the the tight forms that I got like it, the, the edges kind of like sunk out a little bit so today this is a the day after. I think what I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do is take a palette knife and see if, I don't know how tacky it is. I'm sure it's still wet. I don't know how um, how much it's it's drying, but I think I'm going to try and manipulate it more with a palette knife or with a brush to try and get those shapes back that I had. I don't know. This is just an experiment trying out um, stand oil. So I guess we'll see what happens. I really, I do like the idea though of kind of sculpting with paint to get different textural effects, so I'm going to keep trying to experiment with that and just see what happens. Um, I made a lot of progress with the Lovers painting, still working on finding the right key for it. Mm, I've got, now I have my darkest dark, but I'm still trying to push up the lightest light. I do have pure white on it, but since oil paint is transparent, you need to, I feel like I need to build that up in a couple different layers to make sure I'm getting it as bright as I want. So with this I've experimented with a different black. I normally use ivory black and that ivory black is pretty oily 
and I was having issues with other paintings that the blacks, the darks, the dark areas that have a lot of the ivory black would have this really glossy look to it and it was kind of distracting while, while I was painting because other parts of the paintings wouldn't have that like super glossy look to it. So I bought Mars Black, which is supposed to be matter and not have as much oil to it just to experiment with the first layers of using it and then I would put the ivory black on top of it because so I, I squeezed out the ivory black and the Mars back black on my palette and you could definitely see that the ivory black since it's got that glossy black is um, that is darker than the Mars black it was strange though because squeezing it out from the tubes the ivory black it seemed like it was thicker and the Mars black seemed like it had more oil in it because it was like moving around more and it flowed a lot easier um, which was strange but then when I would put the Mars black on the painting it immediately had a matte look to it but it would flow on without using any medium it would flow on to the to the painting really well so that was it's just bizarre the two different blacks they act a lot different also the tinting strength of the Mars black is a lot more powerful. Um, ivory black when I'm mixing up darker colors and I'm mixing my um, the red and the yellow into the black to get different shades of dark. Um, I don't use too much of the red and yellow relatively but then with the Mars black um, I, I was using a, a lot of the red and yellow just a little bit of the black because the tinting strength of the black or the Mars black was really strong. And so then I was looking up um, in my materials book the difference between the ivory black and the Mars black and why they call it Mars black. Um, and it's Mars talking about the god Mars and the god Mars being the patron of iron because it's an iron oxide. Black is what it's made out of. And then the ivory black used to be made out of um, ivory. That, that was burned, but they don't do that anymore, obviously. And I found out that ivory black now is, is the same as bone black, so they use animal bones to um, to get the ivory black, but not ivory anymore. But the Mars black, I don't. It, it seems I'm still going to be using it probably probably just for the early stages of paintings, and I think that would be good also with the fat overlean principle for painting, um, because since the Mars black has a lot less oil to it, if you start that with the painting with the Mars black and then use the ivory black on top of that because it's fatter, it has more oil in it. And then also like with punching the um, the value darker since the ivory black is darker, um, using that last. All right, and then I finished the, the drawing sketch study for my Icarus painting. I, I like it a lot. I like how it turned out. I tweaked some stuff with it and just tightened it up more. Um, I think this is the, well this is the expression that I'm going to be using for the painting. So when I was doing this I was looking from a mirror. The eyes, I took the eyes from Rembrandt's Lucretia painting. So this is the 60 second sped up version of me working on it. And then if you go to my Patreon page which is Patreon patreon.com forward slash Jennifer Marie Keller. You can see the slowed down version if you kind of want to see how I draw it at a more slow pace that you can actually see. Mm -hmm.